Greetings, Class of 2020, and welcome to you and your family and friends. The hooding ceremony is a special event that recognizes that you have earned your Juris Doctor degree. It is designed to be in person so that we can recognize each of you and your accomplishments. Unfortunately, we are not able to do that today. I am sure this is not even close to what you imagined your law school hooding ceremony would be like when you started law school. This is definitely not how I imagined my first year as Dean of Creighton University School of Law. But here we are, and despite it all, I'm privileged and honored to share this day with you. I've been trying to put all of this in perspective, and it's hard. In the context of the loss of life and livelihood so many people are facing, the loss is relatively minor. It's important to acknowledge that because here at Creighton, we care about our communities. As a Jesuit institution, we strive to be people with and for others and work to find the more universal good, and we do. Still, in the context of life experiences, our inability to celebrate your hooding and graduation together is an enormous loss. It's important to acknowledge that, too. My wife and I were already a married couple when we graduated from law school together, and we know that law school graduation is a life highlight. Getting married was an amazing experience and one of the greatest days of our lives. And graduating law school together, four and a half years later, was a similar milestone. In some ways, it was an even better celebration because we shared the day and our accomplishments not just with each other and friends and family, but also with our classmates who had taken the journey with us. So let's acknowledge that for now, we're missing out. You are missing out, and we can mourn that loss. But let's not let that loss diminish your accomplishments or your lives. This is a loss of a moment, and I'm committed to recapturing that moment, that in-person celebration, as soon as we can safely do so. I cannot wait until we have that chance, and we will. Today, then, we mark this moment in time as a reason for great celebration. We should celebrate today and we will celebrate again together when we can. You have earned it, you've worked for it, and you deserve it. We celebrate not only you, but all who have brought you to this point. You are here because of the culmination of so many people and experiences that brought you to this moment. Parents, brothers and sisters, grandparents, aunts and uncles, spouses and chosen partners, children, friends, neighbors, teachers and coaches, among many others, help bring you to this point. And your Creighton Law community celebrates with you too. Your professors pushed you, sometimes perhaps to do more than you thought possible, because we believed in you, and we were right. Our staff has worked to support you and help you get what you need, and our alumni have supported you with generous giving to the scholarships, as well as sharing their time as mentors, employers, and cheerleaders. Our Creighton community is so proud of you, and we celebrate with you today. As we send you out into the world, you will represent Creighton, your clients, and yourself, and I know you'll do it well. As you celebrate today and as you go forward, I ask that you consider the gifts you've been given as you assess your own situation and the circumstances of others. Because for all of us to be at this point, for you to have accomplished what you have, you have been given some gifts that others have not received. I think of it this way. Many of you know that I'm a regular runner. I run most mornings and it's usually a route that takes me out one way and returns on a similar path. This regular out and back process gives me time to think and it helps me to see things from a different perspective literally and figuratively. During my runs, I often notice a similar phenomenon. There are times I have no idea it's windy when the wind is at my back when I start running. When I get to my turnaround, though, I sometimes find a strong wind in my face. This happens enough that I should probably figure out it is windy before I get to the turnaround, especially because it can lead to a faster pace on the way out. Still, I rarely notice. I just think I'm having a good day. In contrast, it's hard to miss when a strong wind is in your face. Everything feels hard, everything feels sluggish and slow, and it feels like all of a sudden you have barriers in your way. When this happens, it makes me think about how many other places, in the figurative sense, this happens. We all have our challenges, and we often have much to overcome, but some have more challenges than others. Because our individual challenges are significant and very real, it can be easy to miss that we may have fewer challenges than others. The things that are barriers to our goals are sometimes obvious to us challenging family circumstances, financial limitations, physical and mental health complications are among the many things that can limit us or at least make things harder for us than someone else. And there are sometimes institutional and societal barriers that restrict or limit people based on their race, gender, religion, ethnicity, sexuality, and economic status. As it impacts each of us in our own way, we feel that wind blowing us straight in the face. But we sometimes miss the wind we have at our back, the supportive spouse, the loving grandparent, the friend who picks you up when you are down. And on a larger scale, societal benefits that we get because people assume things about us because of our status and who we are, or at least appear to be. 
Personally, despite many very real challenges, I know that for most of my life there has been a wind at my back. Sometimes it was strong, and at other times it was barely noticeable, but it has almost always been there. I try to remember that so that I can be grateful for what I have and think about what I can do for others. As we celebrate your hooding and pending graduation from law school, we also celebrate that you are lawyers. No matter what your background or what challenges you have faced, you will always have a little more wind at your back. You have an education that allows you to think critically, analyze situations, and advocate for yourself and others. You have now earned a credential that tells the world you are someone who has achieved academic success few people ever will. Only about 3% of the U.S. population has a professional degree like those in law, medicine, veterinary medicine, and dentistry. Just 3%. You have a Creighton Law alumni network at your back, and you'll be a member of the broad professional network of lawyers across the nation and around the world. You will always have your Creighton Law faculty and staff here to support you. And most important, you will have each other, the class of 2020. Despite what you have missed this last semester of law school, and perhaps in part because of it, you have an exceptionally strong bond it will be a network of support at your back that can last a lifetime. So please, as you go out into the world to be amazing lawyers, try to remember the wind you have at your back and try to see where others have the wind blowing in their faces. And do your very best to help them, as your Jesuit education calls us to do. Do all you can to seek truth and seek a just existence. Class of 2020, I thank you for all you have done and all that you will do, and know that we will continue to expect success, and you should too. You are now Creighton lawyers. You earned it. You belong. It has been my privilege to share this last part of the journey with you, and I'm sorry we didn't have more time together. You inspire me, you amaze me, and you make me proud to be part of this Creighton Law community. Be well, stay safe, and look out for each other. Congratulations, class of 2020. We miss you already. On behalf of Creighton University, I offer my congratulations to all of our graduates and their families. You can all be very proud of your achievements and Creighton University is proud of you. Creighton University is called to provide capable leaders who are knowledgeable and compassionate. This world today needs professionals of conscience in every walk of life and in every corner of the world, men and women of integrity whose hearts and minds and actions are guided by ethical principles. It is my hope that as you apply in your life the knowledge and skills that you've acquired through your years at Creighton, that you will carry forward the time-honored traditions of your Jesuit Catholic education. And all of you will carry the imprint of this place on your lives in ways that extend far beyond your knowledge in the fields that you have chosen to study. Graduates, you've been greatly influenced and in many ways forever changed by those who taught mentored and inspired you. Your professors have challenged you, held you to high standards, and supported you in your efforts for which we know you are all grateful. On behalf of all faculty at Creighton University, congratulations and Godspeed. Congratulations. It's an honor to be able to acknowledge your accomplishments. Let us pray. God of us all, we gather in your presence to celebrate the gifts and talents you have bestowed on these women and men. We pray in gratitude for their dedication, their families and friends who've supported them, and their educators and mentors. Because of their enthusiasm, commitment, and curiosity, we are a richer, more diverse community. In the spirit of Ignatius and their Jesuit education, May they always want and choose what leads to God's deepening life in them. We offer this prayer in your most holy name. Amen. Hijankishina Hinekarigi, Andy Snowball Gahingerena, Hochunk Nisho Chachi Egi Muskogi Creek Nation Wa Uojena, Hochungara Sura Wakanjapinga Hingerena, Chakshep Hikikarach Wa Uojena. Hello and greetings to each and every one of you. My name is Andy Snowball. I am from the Winnebago tribe of Nebraska and the Muscogee Creek Nation of Oklahoma. My Winnebago name is Good Thunder, and I am a member of the Eagle Clan. I would first like to acknowledge that Creighton University sits on the original territory and traditional lands of the Omaha Nation. Without the Treaty of 1854, in which the Omaha Nation ceded its lands to the U.S. government, upon which the city of Omaha was established, we would not have the fortune to attend classes on Creighton's beautiful campus. 
As many of you know, I'm a non-traditional law student living in Winnebago with my husband and four children. I started my first week of law school driving almost four hours round trip to attend classes. Not only was the bridge on my fastest route closed for repair, but I also had to drive white knuckled through thunderstorms and torrential rain going to or from class every day. It was incredibly stressful and only added to the seemingly insurmountable stress that we all deal with as new 1Ls. It made me think, maybe this is a sign that I had made a mistake in going to law school. <laughs> but then I thought back to my teachings and about my Winnebago name, Good Thunder. Thunder can be frightening, but in the end it symbolizes something good. For Winnebago's, the new year starts in the spring when you hear the first thunder. It means that rain and warm weather will come and everything will start to grow again. Everything will be new. So instead of succumbing to the stress and obstacles that I would face over the next three years as I pursued my JD, I recognized that the frightening and difficult things to get through were actually going to help me grow. And it hasn't only been my beliefs that have helped me throughout law school. I have not faced my obstacles alone. We all have cheerleaders in our corners, rooting for us and making sacrifices so we can go out and achieve our dreams. Our loved ones, families, friends, mentors, professors, and Creighton staff have all been vital to our success. I want to acknowledge and thank them all on behalf of the Creighton University School of Law graduating class of 2020. We would not have made it to this point without you. In the last few weeks of school, before classes went online, I would see dozens of eagles on my drive between Winnebago and Omaha. In some parts, the skies and trees and fields would be covered by them. It was incredible and something I had never experienced before. In Winnebago teachings, eagles are good medicine to see them as a blessing. Although we are all going through tough times right now, I see those eagles as a sign that we will come out from this okay, that we will all move on and have successful, fulfilling, and meaningful careers. Whatever your faith is, I am sure throughout law school and during these times you have leaned on your teachings to find strength, solace, and positivity. I urge you to keep holding on to what you believe in and to push ahead. It has been an incredible honor to grow alongside you all these past few years at Creighton Law and I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Pinagigi, Wainigi Napshina. Oscar Orlando Aguilar. Mr. Aguilar is receiving the Clinical Legal Education Association's Outstanding Student Award for excellence in clinical casework and exceptionally thoughtful, self-reflective participation in the accompanying clinic seminar. This award honors one law student at each law school across the country who has excelled in a clinical course. Erin Kathleen Arts, cum laude. Adeline K. Baker. Ryan D. Baker, magna cum laude. Gabriel Michael Belcastro, cum laude. John Andrew Bergstresser. Nicholas James Miranda Blackham. Taryn R. Blesson, magna cum laude. Jacqueline J. Bossman, cum laude. Daniel Patrick Bost. Patrick Michael Brady. Maggie L. Brokaw, cum laude. Ms. Brokaw is receiving the award for outstanding service to the law school. This award is given to the student who has engaged in extraordinary service to the law school community, providing a living example of our Jesuit commitment to be men and women for others. Ms. Brokaw is also receiving the David Svoboda Trial Advocacy Award this award is presented in memory of David Svoboda, a Creighton Law graduate and one of Nebraska's finest trial lawyers. The award is given to the student who most reflects Mr. Svoboda's strong trial advocacy skills and his deep understanding of the legal profession's commitment to ethical practice. Thomas Michael Burnett. Timothy M. Coffey. Joseph J. Collins, Missy Jo Corwin, Sheridan Suzanne Couture, Montana Blue Crow, cum laude, 
Austin Hamilton Davis. John Byron Davis III. Mary Catherine Davis. Ms. Davis is one of three students receiving the Severin's Mayor Award for Excellence in Mediation. This award is presented to the law students that excel in mediation. The award was named after Kathleen Severin's, Nebraska's first director of the Office of Dispute Resolution and another great mediator, Dr. Bernie Mayer. Hans Christian de Salas del Valle. Alec Flores Day. Catherine Josephine Delmonico. Emily Faye Dixon, magna cum laude. Daniel J. Esquivel. Connor S. Flinders. Elizabeth Ann Foley. Eric J. Frederick. Jonathan L. Fuller. Jessica Lynn Gilgore. Nicholas Jeffrey Handrich, cum laude. Julie Catherine Hartnett. Ryan Mullins Hartnett. Daniel Addison Hunter. Michael D. Jack. Christian Lawrence Janicek. Cum laude. Larry N. Jarvis. Sandra L. Jarvis. Alexander J. Johnson. Jance E. Johnson. Cassidy L. Johnston. Jason C. Jolly. Blake D. Carlin. Mr. Carlin is receiving the Severin's Mayor Award for Excellence in Mediation. This award is presented to the law students that excel in mediation. The award was named after Kathleen Severin's, Nebraska's first director of the Office Dispute Resolution and another great mediator, Dr. Bernie Mayer. Alexander T. Kelly. Raquel Claudia Kem. John Joseph Landry II. Julianne M. Lanfear Wilson. Jonathan H. Lotka, magna cum laude. Alan Dwayne Leitig. Caitlin Ann Logan Wimmer. Ethan Dale Matchett. Seth McCauley. Blake Kelsey McConnell. Andrew R. McMenemy. Ty Christian Med, magna cum laude. Mary C. Michaels, cum laude. Hattie K. Miller. Alana D. Mitchum. Nicholas James Mizar. Brian Stephen Mullison. Jennifer Ann Novotny, summa cum laude. Ms. Novotny is receiving the highest triennial average award. This award is conferred on the student who earned the highest cumulative grade point average over the first five semesters of their study of law. Amanda Lee Palmer. Cole Brett Perks. Katie Marie Peterson. Clancy M. Peterson. Cole Alexander Plummer. Ellen Patricia Prohaska, cum laude. Stephanie Rose Richards. Candace Lene Roach. 
Samantha Michelle Robb, Helen Elizabeth Russell, magna cum laude. Ms. Russell is receiving the National Association of Women Lawyers Award, which is presented to the graduate who best contributes to the advancement of women in society, promotes issues and concerns of women in the legal profession, exhibits motivation, tenacity, and enthusiasm, and demonstrates high academic achievement. John Connor Sauer. Kyle William Savage. Mr. Savage is receiving the Severance Mayor Award for Excellence in Mediation. This award is presented to the law student that excels in mediation. The award was named after Kathleen Severance, Nebraska's first director of the Office of Dispute Resolution, and another great mediator, Dr. Bernie Mayer. David A. Schout, cum laude. Amber L. Schlody. David Ward Sears, cum laude. Mitchell Stephen Sell, summa cum laude. Mr. Sell is receiving the highest triennial average award. This award is conferred on the student who earned the highest cumulative grade point average over the first five semesters of their study of law. Josiah J. Shanks, cum laude. John Philip Sigmund. Gregory Scott Scosi, magna cum laude. Regina Ann Smith, cum laude. Ms. Smith is receiving the Outstanding Service to the Community Award this award is selected by faculty members for a student who has donated time and talent to serve those most in need in the community. Andrea H. Snowball. Jackson Edward Stokes, cum laude. Mr. Stokes is receiving the American Law Institute Continuing Legal Education Scholarship and Leadership Award for the student in the graduating class who best represents a combination of scholarship and leadership. Keisha Kadil Vantoff. Alex R. Varen. Jamel Jewel Walker. Michaela Lynn West. Riley Marie White. Taylor M. Williams, Joseph F. Willems. Mr. Willems is receiving the Judge Donald P. Lay Law Review Student Award for demonstrating excellence in law review staff duties over the last year. This award is given in recognition of a gift to the law school from the late Donald P. Lay former Chief Judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the Eighth Circuit. Michaela Marie Witherspoon, cum laude. Kristen Michi Nakagaki Wong. Matthew Joseph Zadorosny. Congratulations to the 2020 graduates of Creighton University School of Law. Twenty twenty graduates, the Creighton community composed of faculty, staff, alumni, and Jesuits, welcomes you into a select group. Tomorrow you will officially become alumni of Creighton University. On behalf of the entire university community and your families and friends, congratulations. Graduates, I hope that despite the unusual and disruptive conclusion to the academic year, you are able to bask in the pride you should feel today. You were determined to complete your studies in preparation for the next important step in your life, and you have done just that. To each of you, I say, well done. You are viewing this from locations near and far. Some of you are with family members and others are alone. But we are together in the Creighton family nonetheless. We are a national and global academic community, 
united by a love of learning and a desire to live out a call to service. As you celebrate today with your specific school or college and experience virtually the various rituals that mark this rite of passage, please know that you are prepared. You are poised for further study or employment or volunteer service or residency or fellowship, but you are indeed prepared. Your Creighton degree will attest to that preparation. It will signify that you made good use of the instruction, formation, mentorship, technology, faith, and service opportunities, and more that you found here at Creighton. And in turn, we will point with pride to you as an example of all that Creighton University graduate is and can be. You will make your mark on the world, and it awaits your expertise, compassion, and hope. We can never say it enough. Congratulations on your well-deserved achievement. I look forward to hearing about the great things I know you will do to make our world a better, more just place. God bless you today, tomorrow, and in the years to come. And again, I look forward to addressing you tomorrow and to conferring your Creighton University degrees.